Okay, our goal here is to locate the x and y coordinates of the shaded circular area below. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with this. So um, here we're given like a little pizza slice here with the radius r. And the best way to solve for our uh, centroid here, we have our centroid kind of already pinpointed right there in this figure. But the best way to do this is by using uh, polar coordinates. So by using polar coordinates, uh, if we make our cross section, uh, let's make a cross section like a little pizza or something like this. It'll be like a triangular type of cross section. And uh, actually, you know what, I'm going to do this. Let me get it this way. All right. So this is our cross section. It's a triangular type of piece. Now this is going to be uh, our thickness right here. And our thickness is going to be uh, our differential uh, uh, angle, d theta. And uh, our arc length of this sector is going to be, I'll denote the arc length as s, it's going to be that r times d theta. Okay. And so that's our length of this base of this, uh, we'll, we'll consider it a triangular type of a uh, length right here, but it, but in reality, we made the equation in the form of an arc length. So we won't forget about that. And uh, this length is r. Now we want to know um, what is the distance to the centroid of this guy right here? Well, if you recall your centroids of a triangle, uh, up this way, it would be two thirds of this length, right? Pretend this is your right angle. So it's two thirds R. Now, but we want it in the x direction. This is in the radial direction. We want it in the x direction. So in the x direction, it would just be our theta, right? Let's pretend that this is our theta all the way up to this point. So we're we're traveling our our uh, our x bar. In reality, this is going to be our x bar, and I'll go ahead and erase this a little bit so that way you can see what I'm talking about, our x bar to the centroid is just that component of the two thirds uh, r. So the component is going to be two thirds r cosine of theta. Yes, so it does involve a little bit of trigonometry uh, and geometry, of course. So this is our x bar here. Now, what is our y bar to this centroid? Well, if you look at this conceptually, we notice that this angle is alpha and that this angle is alpha and it is symmetric about the x-axis. So our y bar is actually going to be zero. Yes, zero. We love that number, don't we? Okay. So now that we have our x bar and our y bar, let's go ahead and get our dA. So our dA is going to be the area of this little cross section right here. And that's basically the area of a triangle, right? All right, we made a triangular uh, slice. So we're gonna go ahead, uh, the area of our triangle is gonna be one half of the base times height. So our base, remember we said is our arc length, r d theta. And our height is just r. So if we simplify this, it's going to be 1 half r squared d theta. Now, uh, we can go ahead and uh, integrate our differential area to get what our total area is. So doing that, we get the integral, and let me do better uh, Latin S here, the integral 
Now it's going to start from our negative a from the x-axis. It's going to go negative a radians to positive a radians, right? This is our area right here. So negative a to a, and a is alpha, of course. That's our angle in radians. And it's the integral of this piece right here, of our dA. So 1 half r squared d theta. All right. So this turns out that our area is going to be, uh, if we evaluate this integral with respect to theta, we should get that it is... Uh, 1 half times r squared times theta from negative alpha to alpha. Okay, and then if we evaluate this from alpha to, or negative alpha to alpha, we should get that it's uh, uh, 1 half r squared, and it should be 2 alpha, and it should turn out to be that this guy is actually just going to be r squared alpha. Right? So that is the total area of this guy right here. Let me scroll down a little bit. It's running out of room. r squared alpha. That is our integral of dA. All right, let's go ahead. Now that we have all the constituents we need to solving for the centroids, let's go ahead and solve for our x-coordinate of the centroid. So the x-coordinate is going to be, I'll refer to this formula again. It is the uh, integral of our x-bar times dA divided by the integral of our dA. So our x-bar, remember we said that is two-thirds r cosine of theta. So two-thirds integral of two-thirds r cos of theta. And our dA is our one-half r squared d theta. So one-half r squared d theta. And we're adding all the centroids from negative alpha to alpha divided by the integral of r dA. Okay. Let's go ahead and uh, simplify this just a little bit. So we can say that this is the integral negative alpha to alpha. Of uh, Now let's combine our fractions here. If we multiply the numerator and the denominators respectively, we should get uh, 2 sixths. Or if you want to simplify the fraction, we should get that to being uh, one third of r cubed cosine theta d theta over our total area. Now let's go ahead and evaluate this integral. So if we evaluate this with respect to theta, we'll pull out any constants. So our constants are one third times uh, r cubed, and the antiderivative of cosine should be sine of theta. And we're evaluating this from negative alpha to alpha over our integral of dA. All right, now let's go ahead, plug those alphas in. I am the alpha and the uh, omega, uh, a wise guy once said, but uh, apparently we have an alpha and a negative alpha. So negative alpha can technically uh, be considered an omega because it's the opposite of an alpha, I guess. Uh, I know that was a bad joke, but whatever. So one third r cubed. Now we have sine of our alpha minus sine of our negative alpha. Okay, I'm put, uh, let me put some uh, parentheses around these to denote that this is an operator here. And this is divided by our dA integral of that. Now, can we simplify sine of alpha minus sine of negative alpha? Well, let's look. Let's look at our uh, uh, little circular 
shaded area right here. So remember, this is negative alpha, right? I'll put negative right there to denote it's negative alpha. This is alpha. Now sine of that, let's just let's just pick a point right here. I'm just gonna pick a point right about here. It doesn't matter, it can be any point. So if we go down sine, remember is our vertical distance from whatever radial distance we have. So sine of alpha is this distance right here, and it's we'll, we'll call it negative y. Negative y. And this distance up here, exactly in the same uh, direction, just in the opposite direction, uh, is going to be our positive y. So in reality, we're just adding a sine of alpha with another sine of alpha, but we're subtracting it. So it's going to be sine of alpha minus sine of alpha, and it's going to be two sine of alphas, right? This whole thing right here. So it's two, I'll write that here. So this is actually equal to two sine of alpha. I'll write that right here, two sine of alpha. And uh, we might as well go ahead and uh, substitute in our integral of dA, which we said to being r squared alpha. So let's go ahead and put that here, r squared alpha. All right, now let's go ahead and simplify this. So if we bring the two out here, multiply it by the, our one third fraction, it's two thirds. We can get rid of a couple of terms here of r. So it's two thirds r sine of theta or sine of alpha divided by r alpha. And this should be our centroid in the x direction. Now our y, our centroid in the y direction is our integral of y bar times dA over the integral of dA. Now let's go ahead and plug everything. So y bar, remember we said it's zero, right? It didn't go up any direction on the y axis. It's still within the x axis. So because y bar is zero, so because y bar is zero, our centroid in the y direction is also zero. Okay, so there we have it. So our x coordinate is two thirds of r sine of alpha divided by alpha, and our y coordinate is just zero.